Today's video is a bit of a weird one. I wasn't able to film inside the plane because I was in a bit of a hurry to get going. And as I'm sure everyone in aviation knows, uh, there's no point trying to rush things. Uh, you'll miss stuff and get yourself into trouble. So I left the cameras and I thought I'll just go and do the flight and then see if I can use some of the online tools that are available to play back my track and talk through the flight. Today's flight's a quick trip to Western, quick cup of tea, and then back up in the air to Oxford to pick up my instrument landing. I'm doing a radar vectors on the ILS and on runway 19 and a pre book slot, so I need to get going and get there. Hence, no cameras in the plane, but I'm using some of the great tools that are available online to be able to play back and track my flights. And hopefully, it'll be a useful uh, explanation of, of use doing an instrument approach. And it's a really good way of seeing how on target you are, on track you are and uh, learn a few things as you go. The first tool that I like to use when I'm checking out my instrument landings is Cloud Ahoy. It's a brilliant tool. You can just export your Sky Demon track and then import it straight into Cloud Ahoy and it will automatically process all the data, your headings, altitude, turns, etc. cetera, and, uh, obviously airspeed, and then it'll overlay your course onto a pretty accurate GPS map. So it's a bit like the uh, Google world and looking at um, your track through Google world, but it has a lot more detail and you can also add detail to it. So the more information you put in, the richer the experience that you get out. So I've taken off from Tur Western and I'm just leaving the Tur Western airfield and getting clear of their airspace. The view on the left is obviously a bit of a heads up display out of the window. And it does sometimes go a little bit random. The GPS loses track and that's it trying to catch up. But generally it's, it's pretty good. The top right is a 3D flight path. So you can see my altitude across the ground. And then the bottom right is very straightforward. It's a bird's eye view of a map of my flight path. So I'm heading off now as I've cleared to Western and I'm going down to the Westcott NDB. So I've tuned that in, I've pressed identify or listen to on the comm and I can hear it giving me the Morse codes. And I'm also ch changing over from to Western to Oxford so I can have a chat with Oxford. Before I go to Oxford, I've tuned in the ATIS. So I'm listening to the ATIS and noting down what the information is and then I speak to Oxford, pass the ATIS to Oxford and ask for a traffic service. So at this point, I've picked up a traffic service and I'm being asked by Oxford ATC just to fly direct to the Oxford NDB. So that's my first fix or my approach fix to Oxford right over the airfield is their NDB. The time lapse has been speeded up of this whole little video because it's a, I don't know, 30 minute or 20 minute section and I've just speeded it up until we get into uh, picking up the ILS and being able to show the approach on that track. So that's the speed is moving very, very quickly. Here I am tracking along, heading to the Oxford NDB, pretty straightforward really, and just looking at my instrument scans in the cockpit, listening to the radio, waiting for another update from Oxford ATC and cruising along with Will, my buddy, as my safety pilot looking out the window. Okay, so as I get towards Bister Airfield, I've got Oxford ATC calling me an Oxford approach, and they've asked me to turn onto a heading of 280. So 280 takes me straight over the Bister Airfield, and I'm imagining in my head what's happening now is that Oxford are moving a bunch of different planes around. They've got a number of planes in, uh, coming in or departing, and they want me to make sure I'm clear of, of any aircraft, no conflicts. I'm also trying to hold my altitude. I know that Oxford's up three and a half thousand feet to pick up the NDB, uh, or to rather to start the instrument approach, but I haven't been asked to climb any further. So keeping my altitude reasonably high, but not, not picking up to three and a half thousand feet. Okay, ATC have just given me another heading, so another course change. So it's asked me to go right 
onto a heading of 330. And this is taking me pretty similar to the outbound leg if I was doing a procedural service. And I'm also starting to lose some altitude because I know I need to drop some altitude to pick up the localizer. In fact, ATC asked me to, to drop my height. Now I've been given a new heading, which is 160. And 160 will take me onto a direct path to cross over the localizer for the ILS approach to 1.9. So I'm now flying along. I can see the localizer on my instruments in front of me. It's off to my left. And actually, I'll bring on the flight path overlay now. And as you can see, uh, you get an idea of what the flight path looks like. So there's a raised white line in the middle, which is bang down the center of the runway, which becomes magenta once I'm on the glide path. And then left and right of that is the either side of what would be acceptable to pick up the ILS, so the limitations of the ILS. So now I'm coming around, uh, the localizer in my cockpit on my instruments is coming into the center. I've established ILS, so I let the ATC know that I've established the localizer on my instruments. The instrument's bottom left hand of, my, uh, of the screen there. And now I'm flying down using the ILS uh, and the, to, to, sorry, using the instruments in my cockpit. And really I'm trying to hold it on a heading. So I'm looking at my horizontal position, uh, my vertical position, but really my horizontal is, is my heading. So trying to fly a, a decent heading of 190. There's very little wind. So I don't have to account for drift or not too much. Uh, looking at my track overlaid here, there was a little bit of breeze blowing from the southeast, which has pushed me off. And I could have probably flown 185 and been a bit more accurate. So now my altitude's coming down and picking up the glide slope <clears throat> and quite happy flying along, still heads down looking at the instruments. My decision altitude at Oxford is roughly 900 feet. So at 900 feet, I will look out of the window and see if I can see the runway. If it's um, cl clear of cloud, if it's not, then I'll need to do a go around. So now my altitude is coming down. I'm flying a reasonable path. I'm flying slightly right of the runway. Uh, as you can see, instead of flying 190, I was flying nearly 200. So I've brought it back round to line it up. And I'm at just over 1,000 feet. Coming down, reasonable height, good speed, doing my downwind checks, brakes off under carriage down, mixture rich, carb heat on, flaps, and harnesses and hatches. Okay, so I have a decision height. I look out the window. Can I see the runway? Yes, it's just off to my left. As you can see, I've been flying heading of 200, not 190. So I correct slightly on seeing the airfield. And then as I'm on target, I do a missed approach go around which is pretty straightforward Oxford. I've done it a few times before. Fly straight ahead to the Oxford NDB. And then passing the NDB, turn left onto a heading of 166. So that's it. I'm heading away from Oxford, VFR back to White Waltham. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Sorry, it's not my usual multi-cam experience, but I wanted to share with you Cloud Ahoy and a, a, an ILS approach to Oxford that I haven't done any instrument approaches for four months. So I thought it'd be worthwhile sharing, see what you think. Hopefully you find it useful. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, I look forward to getting back in the plane and doing another trip with you very soon. Thank you.